Good evening. Um, this is good. This is the June 11th, um, 2024 Conservation Commission meeting. Uh, first order of business, I'm going to announce that this meeting is taped and recorded by Area 58 and can be viewed on YouTube. Those members present would be Commissioner Plant, um, Kathy, Alan Diaz, and Ed Lang. Uh, first order of business is hearings and appointments. And unfortunately, a lot of our hearings and appointments have been continued. But we're going to start with the 7 p.m., which is um, 8 Hill Lane, map 120, lot 2T, DEP number SE-171. I would, that is out to be reviewed. I'll be looking for a motion to continue that to the 625 meeting. Uh, I make a motion to continue the 7 p.m. Uh, hearing for 8 Hilda Lane to June 25th, 2024. Uh, the meeting will start at 7 p.m. I'll be looking for a second. I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. Um, I'm going to take some items out of order only because the 7 to 5 is um, a few minutes away. Um, why don't we go to discussions and actions to be taken? Um, and that's going to be 112 River Street. Uh, DEP number SE1710310. Um, just to refresh the board, this 112 River Street had a previous notice of intent that wasn't completed. And then we did the research and we found that a second notice of intent had been submitted and there had been a partial certificate of compliance. Uh, Peggy and I last week went through the Registry of Deeds. We located the full Certificate of Compliance completion for the second one. So basically, we'd, I'd be looking for a motion to, it's, it's, it's language in there, to issue a COC that no work has been completed. And I believe it, that's going to be somewhere in the file, wherever that is. Uh, I think yeah, that is. Okay. That's where you're on there. I'd be looking for a motion to issue the certificate of compliance. For once, for um, Mass DEP number SC 1710310112 River Street. Okay, I make a motion uh, to issue a certificate of compliance for 112 River Street, DEP number SE 171-0310, uh, with um, stating that no work was done. That's correct. You looking for a second? I'll second that. Okay. Looking for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Four. Genius. Let's see. Being 705, uh, we have a continued hearing for 8 Hill Lane, Map 120, Lot 4T, DEP number SC 171. The last digits are missing, but I believe. 0579. Oh, 0579, thank you. Um, that is still out for review, so I would be looking for a motion to continue that until our. Uh, 625 meeting. I'll make a motion to continue that to our 625 meeting. Um, same time, 705. Uh, actually, we'll, we'll set it up for 705, but I do want to discuss future hearings, but we'll set it up for 705 again. Okay. Uh, 
I'm, I'm looking for a second. I'll second the motion. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Okay, four zero zero. We're gonna go out of order again, yep. and we're gonna be discussing um, rotating peer reviews. Um, I think we discussed a few weeks ago that we were going to um, send out all the peer reviews once the applications are received. Um, so would the board be okay with us getting two or three different peer reviews for notices of intent, and then they would go on a rotating basis? So you'd use um, ecosystems, probably on the larger projects. Um, there have, Peggy did send out um, some requests for information. There are some other companies that would be interested in doing that. So if that's okay with the board, um, we would let whoever's in the office kind of make that decision um, when it comes in. Yeah, I just have a question about that. So Ecosystems, he really specializes in wetlands delineation type peer reviews, right? And he's very familiar with that and not all engineers are. So would it be um, based on the type of work that the office would decide who to send it to as in who is the most qualified in that area? The, or would it just be random? No, the, the, the way that we discussed it and then we'll continue with this, is that they would have the same qualifications as the ecosystem. We're not going to be using a review engineer for our stormwater management that does the wetlands. So these individuals, whoever they might be, would be specialists in, in wetlands, delineations, reviews, um, so that's the way it would be. Okay. Yeah, oh, pretty much that's what I was going to say. It's okay. just that there's so many um, peer reviews that are going to be coming out that it might be more than one person can do. So if we have three or four different wetland scientists we can go to, it'll... So will, will it be backed up, pretty much you're saying, right. so it would be much more efficient? Cool. And they'll all have the same qualifications yes. as ecosystems does. Yes. It's well, ecosystems, is that what it's called? Or e similar. Yeah. So, yeah, okay. let me just point out that if, as long as we're okay with this, we're going to be interviewing all the qualifications. Okay. So the staff is not going to make any decisions as to who is going to represent the board, the only decision they will make is, was it one, two, and three? Um, it's sort of similar to Board of Health. Plan comes in, goes to one engineer, the next one goes, and they just keep rotating. So it will be based on their scheduling, basically, so that they don't get overloaded. Correct. Yeah, I'm perfectly Correct. fine with that okay. then. So I would be looking for a motion that we're going to uh, go with rotating, rotating peer reviews, and we will we will be interviewing those applicants. Anybody want to move that motion? Uh, put a motion that we uh, rotate the peer reviews. Do we have a second? Uh, second. Okay. All, there's no discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Four zero. Okay. It being 710, we have another continued notice of intent, DEP number SE171-0574 for 8 Hill Lane. Uh, I would be, that's still out for peer review. Um, I would be looking for a motion to continue that to our 625 meeting. I make a motion that we continue <clears throat> 8 Hill Lane Roadway uh, DEP number SE-171 dash zero seven four to the 625 meeting we have a second i'll second that okay all in favor aye, aye. Okay. four zero hopefully i mean we've got three here that are out for review and that's because we you know like people come in then we said okay send it out to be reviewed um the office has been shot shot staff the uh, patty is no longer our administrative assistant she resigned um and Peggy's considering changing so that we don't know where, where, who we're going to have for administrative assistant. But <clears throat> I think this would expedite the process by them going out quickly. Um, and the other thing that we probably ought to consider is should we be scheduling NOI hearings prior to periods? And you could better tell me that when an application comes in, is it automatically scheduled for a public hearing? 
It is when it comes in, you have to do the advertising and then they get it onto the next meet, next available meeting that they... Um, and maybe that's why we're getting so many continuance. Maybe we ought to consider that the application come into the office, it go out to be reviewed, and then public hearings be scheduled. That's going to reduce the amount of times that we're going to have to see people, mm -hmm. and it, we'll have all our information. And that way they won't have to come into a meeting just to hear us say it's going to be continued. Continue. Yeah. Is everybody fine with that? We okay. did agree that they will automatically be going out for peer review. Be, yes. So, right. so the notice of intent window will start once yes. it's peer reviewed, then? Correct. Yeah, that sounds good. That makes sense. Sounds good. Next item that we're going to take out of rotation is 341 Plymouth Street. Um, just to give you guys an update, that's the flooding in front of um, O'Reilly's, in front of Dunkin' Donuts. Oh, yeah. Um, I did draft up a, a kind of a scope of work. I gave that to Steve Haywood. He's in agreement with it. I just haven't put the rest of it on paper. So our next meeting, uh, I'll have it on paper. He's in agreement with it. And basically, the, the roadway is going to be improved in August. So yes. as long as he can get the funding to get an engineer out there prior to, to August, which he seems to, he thinks he's going to be OK, um, they're going to be making some elevation changes in the road, only because O'Reilly's, the driveway is pitching the wrong way. The water goes west, and then it has to go east to the catch basin. And that's causing the flooding. It's the same thing at Duncan Donuts. Um, and Steve and I were out there during a heavy rainstorm, so we know what needs to be done. I have it on paper, I just don't have all the photographs. All right. Um, we've got a couple more minutes for our 715. Um, policies and procedures. Does anybody want to? I know there's been some discussion on. Um, uh, replication areas work in the 50. Does anybody want to open that up? For yeah, um, there was a couple things. So the WPA form that we looked at. Um, Which one? Though? The um, determination of applicability that Hansen okay, is okay. using. Yes. It had you know a few different items that you said. Can you explain to me, actually, exactly what what happens if we go through this process instead of them having to come in for an NOI? Uh, that's that does not replace an NOI. It does not. Okay. All that replaces is an RDA. RDA. Okay. And Thank what you. it does, it allows uh, the agent, who that might be, to look at that particular project. And can't did you read that? Because she did not see it. Okay. You give it to her, and then we're not going to decide anything tonight on this. But it allows the agent the the ability to go out and look at the project. Mm -hmm. If it's out of the 50, if it's a septic repair, or if it's some sort of drainage issues or some sort of tree removal, the agent can authorize that. Okay. So I think some of the items on there, that would be great, but not all of them. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think that's a great starting point to, to start with that and say which ones um, you know, we might be able to do that with. And um, part of what I think we were talking about is um, you know, cutting down trees. One of, the, one of the people that's on the agenda tonight, you went out there and, and looked at their property and you know, there was different different size of trees and like what do we consider a full adult established tree and so I did look into what other towns have done and, and what they are doing for for policies and what um, some of some of what other towns have done so if I can uh, take a minute sure. I'll share so the town of Franklin um, has policies to replace vegetation with native plantings um, to refrain from disturbing natural features, um, including trees larger than 10 inch diameter, limit vegetation clearing to 10% beyond structures and paving. So um, that's the town of Franklin. The town of Reading has um, that plantings within the buffer zone must be native species. They have that um, you're allowed to cut down certain trees 
if you leave snag trees that are at least like eight to 15 feet above grade. Um, so I know that was something somebody was asking. Somebody, I, I don't remember the, the property, I think. Um, it might've been 25 Crescent, but um, one of the people was at, they were asking about, you know, if they just cut the tree and instead of removing the tree. And so the town of Reading allows that as long as they're leaving eight to 15 feet above grade. So the root structure stays in place and then animals have a habitat. And um, so, you know, different towns, the town of Hingham, theirs is um, that what's considered a full grown adult tree is six inches or greater at breast height. I'm not sure exactly what breast height means. I believe when I looked it up, it was a uh, like four and a half feet, yes, four and a half feet above ground. So that's what the town of Hingham uses for their policy. Um, so six inches or greater there. And, and it could be that um, Franklin's saying 10 inches diameter at the ground oh, level. Yeah. yeah. So that would probably make sense if it's 10 at the ground level, then it's six mm -hmm. at uh, four and a half feet. So, you know, these are, are some, um, so town of Hingham, I really liked theirs. They said um, one to one ratio within the 100 foot buffer, but a two to one within the 50 foot buffer. So that's what the town of Hingham is doing. And I think that that is actually a great policy. Um, and then you have to clearly indicate which uh, trees are beyond the six inch diameter on the site plan. So, and I think it might be easier to say, you know, four and a half feet high to do the, the six inch right. me measurement right. rather than at the, right. the ground level in case it's wet or, you know, in case it's... Usually when you buy trees, you buy by caliper, which mm -hmm. is going to be that bottom section. But, it, you know, these are going to be full grown trees that we're not, you're not going to be buying. I, I just do have one question. Mm -hmm. Was that within the 50 or was that anything within the 100, your those particular regulations? I believe it was anything within the hundred okay. uh, because it was just the conservation and I would have to confirm that. I don't that's know okay. for certain and because I believe it was just the conservation policies which would involve anything within the hundred. Mm -hmm. So and the fact that they're saying the, the one to one ratio within the hundred feet in you know in their policies, um, I believe that's they're talking about within within the hundred, but we we would have to confirm that. But I, I did like the town of Hingham's as a model. Okay. At any questions at this point, Kathy has to review that, and we yeah. all should review that. Yeah, if they, um, one to one ratio. So if they have like a, a few trees they want to clear out because they're um, a nuisance or just in the way or they're damaged or whatnot, if you do, I know like most people come in like a mom and pop will say come in and say I need this removed and this because of whatever reason. Um, sometimes the lot might not be one to one or two to one if you put it somewhere else. I don't know. I, well, I think yeah, as long as they're putting it somewhere else on the property and um, choosing native species, then that's more beneficial probably if it's something that had to be removed because of, you know it's problematic. So. Okay. Was it yeah. was it the one to one for the disturbance area for replication? And two to one within the fifty. That's it's that's what it sounds like to me. It wouldn't necessitate if you've got two oak trees in that fifty to hundred, you're going to replace them with four. Um, we need to clarify that. Usually, a one to one replication means that if you're in the fifty to hundred, you're going to disturb one thousand square feet. Then you're going to replicate one thousand square feet. So it goes by square footage, more than number of trees. Well, the one to one is a little confusing from. The way I look at the regulation, the one to one is sort of a replication. We mm -hmm. deserve a thousand, yeah. you replace two thousand. It really has nothing well, that, to do with the tree. That would be two tree. to one, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. okay. Right. Right. That's right. So I think yeah. what Ed's thinking is, if we cut down one tree in the fifty, you want to put two trees in the in in the hundred, and that don't, that's not the intent of the regulation. I don't think. Okay. I think it's yeah. just the disturbance area. Yeah, I, I I fully believe within the fifty years we should yeah do replicate mm -hmm. as much as possible. Uh, the, the, the hundred, is it buffer zone more of a thing, yeah. situation? Okay, I see what you're saying. So you're saying you're okay with the, the replication. Inside the 50. Inside the 50, but you don't feel that it belongs inside the hundred. Yeah, that's just my opinion. Well, anything we get the policies and procedures, 
we need to have a public hearing. Mm -hmm. So we can, we'll, we'll chat about this some more. Um, Kathy can read that. Um, this is just a tool to get some of the stuff off the agenda. Um, maybe the board's not ready for that. But if we're going to try to make some changes, and there should be, I think the regulations are back from 1989, mm -hmm. from what I read. Right. So it's, it's due. Um, and I think the board has been fairly consistent with no activity in the 50. And that's the impression I'm getting. You know, I listen so, um, so there wouldn't be any two to one, let's say. Yeah. So, so I was just going to um, just say that the replication that they were talking about is as if they disturb the wetlands themselves, like within the 50, say they disturb a thousand feet, then they're going to replicate. You can do the two to one, so you're going to replicate 2,000. But as far as trees, like the singular trees, mm -hmm. that's something we could look into, like, as a like maybe as you know looking at each NOI that comes before us if they're taking down so many trees and we wanted them to replant we could specify that yeah that's what I, thought, you know, I was talking about yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that's what yeah, they correct. talked about planting so and we're talking about the 50 and the 100 so not in the wetlands because no, that would no. not be the 50 or 100 no. that would be in the wetlands. the wetlands so that we do now you know if somebody i mean that's automatic if somebody's going to be disturbing wetlands that they have to replicate right, right. but um what i'm suggesting is it seems to me that hingham is saying beyond the wetlands and they're talking about plantings i believe that's how they worded it i would have to it's been a while since i looked um i believe they're talking about trees about replacing the plantings one to one in the hundred and uh, two to one in the 50 but I could be wrong so because like I said that was a while ago that I so if down. someone comes before us and they have a tree that they feel is diseased or is uh, putting their property in danger they take that tree down then we could ask them to plant two other trees only if it's within the or 50 one other tree. but one other tree if it's within the hundred yeah, and that they are suggesting or requiring native trees. Yeah. So, um, you know, that would be beneficial yeah. as and well. And going along with that, you probably want to then um, say that you wouldn't do a certificate of compliance until maybe that tree had grown sure. to a certain They said two years. Two years yeah. is, it has to remain for two years. Yeah. yeah. Typically, you can, give a, you can give a partial or do a bond. Um, and Typically, on a replication, we should be looking at them providing us with some sort of replication plan, yeah. and then the guide, and then we give them the guidance. It's probably the best thing to do is to download those whole regulations, and this, when as our schedule quiets down, we'll have a good work session and put everything together. Okay. Okay. Kathy, would you mind if I took that back? Because I just want to look at that yeah. real quick and make oh, sure. it more. I might have uh, no. Which ones I actually like? We are running a yeah. few minutes late. Yeah, we should. Um, Back on schedule. We have a 715 hearing. I believe it's an RDA. 39 Ocean Avenue. It says a continued hearing. I don't recall this being on the agenda. It was this folder over here. So let's read that into the record. into the record. Um, notice is hereby given of a, of a public hearing conducted by the Halifax Conservation Commission under provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, Wetlands Protection Act, and Chapter 164 of the Town of Halifax Wetlands Protection Bylaw on Tuesday, June 11, 2024 at 7.15 p.m. at Halifax Town Hall to <coughs> consider the request for determination of applicability filed on May 22nd by Alexis McLeod of 39 Ocean Avenue, Halifax, Max, Mass, to remove an oak tree located in the backyard off the deck and along the water at the property located at 39 Ocean Avenue, shown as map 19, lot 29. I'm looking, is, yeah, okay, she said, okay. I am looking for a motion to open the hearing. I put a motion that we open up the hearing. Do a second. 
Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Mr. McLeod, you have the floor. What I'm gonna ask you to do, um, did you have any plans or anything? Did you submit anything to the to the office regarding the tree? Any pictures of the tree? Yeah, everything there. Yeah. There's something there. I will have all this messed up. Yeah. I have one quick question, too. Just listening to you read that um, notice, because I, I was looking through the folder that you also wanted to repair the retaining wall. Yeah. That wasn't in the notice. Does that make a difference? So She's going to have to do a notice of intent to do it to repair the wall. Okay. And I, and I spoke with her, uh, okay. and I actually paid a visit on my way in. Okay. Um, okay. Here. I am going to pass this out. You can pass that along. That's pictures. And Ed, I'm going to let you take a look at it because mm -hmm. I went out there tonight. Just give us a moment to take a look at it. Then I'm going to ask you to go to the microphone and explain. Did you want me to pass this down, or are you all? No, 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 we, we shared that one. Okay. Uh, Ms. McLeod, would you mind just going to the microphone so we can get you on tape? Okay. Identify yourself for the record, and just explain what you would like to do. Please say, say my name. Yes. Yes, yeah, and name and address, please. Alexis McLeod, 39 Ocean Ave. Um, this is just the first step that I need to get done in order to do a bigger project. Um, the retaining wall fell apart into pieces and is now caving in the backyard. And in order to get the machines back there to fix the wall, I need the tree taken down to the ground. My deck needs to come down. So this is just the first step in doing that project. And I had a contractor and a guy come out and um, the only way to fix the wall is to get the machines back there, but he's going to do the second part of the project on his own and just trying to do little steps at a time, money-wise. Okay, all right. Any questions from the board? Um, I don't. It looks like that tree is located in a very problematic place as far as the deck. Unfortunately, it looks like a very healthy tree to me. It looks like yeah. an old and healthy tree. It's pretty dead on it. I mean, it looks nice now because it's like... Okay. Really just, nice. just, just hold on for a second, oh, okay. Yeah. So... That's unfortunate that it's a very healthy tree and it looks happy there. But the deck does not look happy there and <laughs> just the retaining wall. Yeah. So yeah. I can see that's a very, very small property. And to have a tree that size on a property that small um, yeah. looks yeah. problematic to me. So yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree too, because it could be damned to the house, the yeah. deck, because that's a yeah. pretty yeah. big tree. Yeah. Yeah. Right through the roof. Yeah. Right through the roof. Okay. And they, well, hold on. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm not set. Okay. Um, I, on the way in, I stopped by to look at it. It's a dangerous tree. I agree. Um, she's indicated that, that the she's going to file a notice of intent on the wall. It looks like some of the roots have impacted that wall, and that's what caused the problem. So I would be looking for a motion at the board. Well, first of all, let me do this. Any more questions? How are we taking the tree down? Is it a crane? Yeah, the crane tree. We'll bring a crane, at least detail, and they'll take it down within four hours. Okay. Okay. Do we have any comments from the audience? Mm -hmm. you, you saw it. <laughs> okay. Um, if there's no other comments or concerns, I'm going to ask for a motion to close the hearing. 
39 Ocean Avenue. I put a motion that we close the hearing for 39 Ocean Ave. Um, second. I'll second that. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Now we're going to go into the a motion to allow the request for the removal of that large oak tree. Someone want to move that motion? Make that motion? Yeah, I'm not sure how to how to state it. So, okay. if, if you don't it's mind, it's a negative RDA. Yeah, we're, I'm, I'd be looking for a, a negative determination and allow the applicant to remove the large oak tree at the water line. Stop to remain. Okay, I'll. I'll um, let me get some. Can I sure. pause for yeah, a second? Yeah, discussion. I thought she said it had to be removed to ground level. Can is it, is it okay for a stump to remain for the? Will the equipment be able to? I think they're grinding because it's wherever the roots being in the wall. Correct. Yeah, that's from my, my conversation with Ms. McLeod. They were going to they were going to grind it. They weren't going to pull the stump. No. That's too dangerous. No, it's, you couldn't. You oh, couldn't. Too I understand. Yeah, the stump, oh, stump is too remain. They can grind it, but it, it would yeah. destroy. The wall, the, the deck, and the, the who knows what else. Yeah. And eventually, if it grows back, it grows okay. back. We're not going to okay. put anything over. Right. Okay. So we we have a motion. Yes. Yeah, so I'll make a motion as stated. Okay. No other second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Four zero. Okay. You will be getting something. I'm not sure, <laughs> which gives you the okay to do that. You should wait to get that, and then you can hire the contract to remove the tree. She yeah. is thinking of possibly planting another tree as well. Like, you know, I don't know if that changes anything. I don't know what we're thinking of. Where are you going to put it? Yeah. yeah, that's the thing. Like, yeah, you know, that's yeah, that's no <laughs> And it's a 10 day appeal period, right? Or is that just for NOIs? I think it's. Well, I, don't, I, think it's I don't know of any 10 day appeal period. Even on NOIs, you've got a 30 day appeal. You know. uh, once, you, once we approve it, then there's, you have to wait 10 days before starting any work. Okay. Yeah. Could be. You will get a notice. I'd wait the 10 days. I'll have to look that up. Yeah, you'll get a notice in the mail. Uh, the 10 um, days start now because we did yeah. approve it. Okay. So, yeah, it'll take a few days for getting the mail. Yeah. But I think it won't yeah. be at the time before. I think the neighbors are going to love you to get all those leaves out of the water, and um, that's one of the worst ones on there. Yeah. Okay? So, you'll be getting something. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're all set. You're welcome. You too. If the board doesn't mind, um, it being 7:30, to I'd like to move the 7:25 out of. That's going to be a continuance, but that's going to take a few minutes to go over. And why don't we go to the 25 Crescent Avenue continued hearing uh, tree removal request. And that would be a uh, quick question on yep. the 720. Should we just do the 720? Oh, I'm sorry, did yep. I miss the 720? Yep. Yeah, yes, I'm sorry. So we can just get that out of the way and yeah. continue. Um, we have a 720 Haywood Street map 121 lot 1D, a notice of intent hearing, uh, DEP file number SE 1710577. Um, that plan is still out to be peer reviewed. I would be looking for a motion just to continue. I put a motion that we continue uh, Haywood Street, notice of intent, DEP number SC1710577 to continue it to 62524. Uh, okay. I second. Okay. Um, you got, we got a motion, we got a second. Uh, I just want to make a, just a little bit of discussion. I asked the engineer, but I couldn't find it, that when they submit some of these notice of intents, that they mark the limit of the work at the, at the boarding vegetated wetland. So that if you want to go out and look at it prior, you'll be able to see stakes and where the closest thing is going to be, whether it be the septic system or the house and everything should be marked. I asked them to do this one. Um, they said they were going to do it. I couldn't find a lot. You're more familiar with Hayward Street, but I, I yeah. there was no corresponding number There's across no number, the street. There's no number, so I don't know. Okay. Mm -hmm. So having said that, in the future, we're going to ask the engineers to get everything staked so that when you make your visits, um, when it does go out, you'll be able to see the limit of work. And I think that's the important part, the limit of work, and then wherever your structures are going to be. So, so we have a, a motion in a second. I'll go to a vote. 
to continue chemistry. Hi. 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 Four zero. Okay. Um, I will take the next one out of order, which is going to be 25 Crescent Street. Three removal requests. Who is yours? Hi. Good evening. Sean Merchant, 25 Crescent Ave. Um, I brought some photos and a letter from the tree company about some of the condition of the trees. Can you see them? Yes, once you pass them on. Yeah, thank you. How many do you have here? Uh, there's a bunch of them. They're just kind of different angles of the trees. Uh, a couple of the oak trees are dead and the tops are damaged. I'm going to let you do this. I'm okay. Gonna, okay. This hand doesn't work too well. I'm going to have to share that with you. If you don't mind, because I'm going to read this into the record. Um, it's a letter from Newcomb Tree Service dated June 7, 2024, to whom it may concern. On April 10th, I went out to examine the trees at 25 Crescent Avenue, Pembroke. Um, and, and we need to clarify something, too. When I noticed this Crescent Street, it's not correct. It's Crescent Ave. Okay. I'm we'll, okay. Um, I observed many pines and oak trees along the water that were infested with carpenter ants and were causing rot to the base of the trees. Some of the pine trees are signs of pine needle disease as well. These trees are a potential danger to the home and other trees around them. Also, these trees are more susceptible to wind damage coming off the pond. If you have any additional questions, please, please reach out to my office. We'll incorporate this. Thank you. You have pictures, so if you want to describe what you have. So some of the photos are uh, just the trees themselves. Uh, it's hard to, really not a photographer. Um, there's a lot of dead branches up in the tops of those trees. Uh, every, in the wind, we've had some pretty good wind storms the last couple of years. Um, we're losing some pretty substantial size branches out of the trees. Um, there's a couple of photos in there of damaged siding on the house where the branches have cracked the siding. Um, we had a couple of ripped screens as well. One of the, rail, the railing on the deck is damaged. I didn't get a picture of that. I kind of forgot that it was cracked. Um, so yeah, so we're just looking to take down the trees just to stop getting damaged to the house this is the biggest thing. Um, and some of the trees, there's a couple of oak trees that have some birds living in Pretty low on the tree, I think there's a knot that they've been going in and out of. There was squirrels in and out of there last year, so I'm not sure how much of that tree's actually left on the inside of it. I have a question for you, if it's yes. okay. Yes. Um, Newcomb came out, did they um, identify which trees are diseased? Did they like, mark them at all so we know which ones they are? He just marked the trees that we want to take down. Uh, are those the ones that are diseased? Or? Uh, yeah, it was like some of them were diseased, some of them were just, they're really close to the house, so if they, anything comes off of it, they're hitting the house. Um, he didn't differentiate when he marked them, he just, he was just like, oh, which ones do you want? And he just kind of went along. What was the total number of trees? I think it was 20. Okay, so 20 trees, and it might have been 20. Five, five. I, I thought there was. I think I, it was at least twenty-five when I went out there. She okay. was, and actually, I don't know if it was your wife. It was my wife. Yes. Yeah, so. She wasn't sure how many, but she thought that it was at least twenty-five. Okay. I could be incorrect. That's what I think. I, I think we lowered the number down to twenty. Okay. Um, but yeah, there's they're just really tall and they're close to the house. So if anything comes off, it, it hits the house. And how were they planning on removing them? Were they cutting the entire tree? Were they just cutting? Part of the tree, were they taking the entire stump away? I mean, the we were leaving the stump, and they were just going to take the trees. They were going to use a crane to take out the pieces. 
The entire tree, though, the all the way down tree, to yes. the stump. Down to the stump. Ken, you made a site visit. Um, how close are these trees to the water's edge? Uh, pretty close to the water's edge. Okay. Um, there were some that weren't, but there were a lot that were right by the, the water. And did you see any signs of the disease? Any, any, uh, I didn't. Of course, I'm not a botanist, right. but I didn't. They looked healthy to me. Um, Ed, do you have any questions? Uh, no, I'm like when anything's in danger of damaging a house or property, I'm far removing the tree. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. If my memory is correct, I don't think we opened this meeting properly, but at this point, there's nobody in the audience. I think you've presented what, whatever you want to present. So I'm going to look for a motion to, to close the hearing, and then we're going to discuss what course of action the board wants to take. So I put a motion that we close the hearing on 25 Crescent F. And I second. OK. Uh, having hearing a motion and a second, uh, I'll go to a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 OK, that's four zero. All right. Um, all right. I'm sorry. I should have wrote your name down. I'm terrible with names. Sean Merchant. S Merchant, OK. That's all right. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're going to go into a discussion. Um, I am familiar with the site. Um, I have not been out there for four or five years, but I was involved with the development of the infrastructure. I have no financial interest, so I'm not concerned about voting. Um, but I'm going to poll the board to see exactly what course of action they want to take because you get so many trees that are so close to the water. Right. So having said that, um, any comments? Let's we'll stop again. Yeah, I, I feel that, um, you know, a tree removal company, their opinion could lean toward, not saying it does, but it could <clears throat> potentially lean toward the interest of the homeowner and what the homeowner would like. Um, and they might be inclined to give an opinion um, saying that the trees are diseased. I, I feel that we could get a second opinion on that. Okay, that's beyond our purview, but Kathy, you, you did the site visit. Um, I, yes, I, I would prefer to have, I'm a, like a botanist, someone who knows trees come out and say, <clears throat> This tree is diseased, and if it's a diseased tree, then I could see it coming down because it then would be endangering your house or your property. But it's 25 trees, it's a lot of trees right near the water, so I'm a little hesitant. Okay. And, but again, if there was a botanist that said this tree is you know, diseased and needs to come down, then yes. Ed, you um, like. Healthy trees, especially pine trees, damage houses. He always showed some evidence of damage to his house. On the, um, just takes one windstorm, even with the healthy tree. Those pine trees, if they're up high, they're all top heavy. They crash into things. And um, if he does, we do. If we do approve of this, some of the trees being moved or whatever, maybe discuss possibly replacing some vegetation, natural stuff there to replace some of that lost um, tree area. And I, I do agree with Ed to the extent that I know pine trees specifically can be dangerous in this area. Um, and I wouldn't want to be the cause of somebody not removing a dangerous tree. But I do feel that an impartial opinion would answer that. My only comment, like I say, I, I know the area is heavily treated, the, um, and they're pines. The roadway and stuff was all cleared, so that's going to make your trees more susceptible. Um, but I'm inclined to think that with the amount of trees that you want to take down, that you should have a plan 
and that this should require a notice of intent. I know that that is a little more expensive because you've got to get an engineer in, but I think the rest of the board might be more comfortable saying they've located 25, 30, whatever it is, trees. These are the designated trees that, that are um, more susceptible to cause damage, they're diseased, whatever. That's my inclination. Um, again, I, I think like it's more, more my, my opinion, like just knock on wood, um, if something happens to this guy's house because we said no to that tree because it looks healthy or whatever or not, uh, I would feel... I feel um, bad about the situation. That we said, no, you can't cut that down, but obviously it's a danger to his house. Mm -hmm. And his, whatever else is. Like, if he's in the house, it could be damage to a person. Uh, safety, I, I work for utilities, healthy trees fall all the time on houses. Mm -hmm. And with that said, though, Ed, we can't remove all the health, healthy trees to protect the houses, and so there has to be some sort of middle ground where I, I feel there needs to be some sort of middle ground as far as not removing healthy trees and sticking to the more dangerous trees that, you know, to, to mitigate any potential damage. But there's always going to be potential damage. I mean, there's, there's a potential for a car hitting your house, you know? So, and we don't actually know for sure because we didn't witness what did damage the siding. So, um, I feel there has to be a middle ground. I, I think the middle ground would be replacing that with some other tree, a small tree, natural tree, something. But, okay. I, I do agree, though, with the idea of doing the notice of intent because it is an extensive project and there are many trees you're asking to okay. bring down. But and I also do feel like as having a botanist go out there and then bringing a plan to us, showing us which trees you feel like you need to take down that are diseased or too close to the house and you feel a, a danger to you. And then also maybe adding to that plan um, if what you're gonna replace them with as far as vegetation. Okay, I just, I just wanna comment, I wanted to show Ed. The trees that you've showed us in, the, in this, predominantly oaks, Mm -hmm. uh, you do have quite a few pines. I just don't know if you can, on, on this particular photograph, this is the pond side over here, am I correct? Yes, it is. Okay, uh, this is being the pond side. Mm -hmm. So these would be growing that way, but uh, are these just behind the house and this shed? Are these, these photographs that just behind the house? That's yes, just behind they are. the house? Okay, yes. so you, you got a little mix there, but they're predominantly oaks with, um, that seem to be fairly heavily leafed. Um, the oaks are gonna be left. It okay. was the taller pines that would be yeah. taken out. Yeah, I think the board, um, and I'm not gonna speak for the board, I, I think that, you know, I, I agree with that. We don't want any trees falling down on houses, especially when you came here and said, look at this tree's gonna fall on my house and I need to cut it down. Um, there's a little uncertainty as to how many and what exactly you're doing and if you need to replace any, and I don't know that you need to. Uh, so I'm inclined um, to request that you get a plan um, and you mark those trees. Um, and then someone will do a site visit and then we'll make a decision on that. But again, that's just, just my opinion. I do, do you, uh, I do have one other question. Are any of these trees, do you feel that your house is in imminent danger? No, uh, the bigger oak that has lost, I'd say a couple of the, most of its top is over <coughs> a little bit. Okay. Um, yeah, it's so is a, a couple of three months gonna, I mean, I know we're going into hurricane season, we have, uh, and, but I don't wanna all of a sudden hear that your house got hit by a tree. Um, I think the notice of intent process is probably gonna be a couple of three months. Okay. 
you know, if you don't feel as though there's any imminent danger, um, that would be my inclination. Uh, but the rest of the board. No, I don't think there's anything that's like imminently that's like dead, completely rotted, and just kind of okay. hanging on for dear life. There's none of those okay. in that area. Um, so yeah, if that's what we have to do, then. That's okay. I think that everybody's comfort zone, because I know there's only one house in Halifax in that area, um, but at least we got a plan. It's part of the record that says, okay, the merchants came in, they got permission to take all whatever trees down, and if there's going to be any replication required, then whoever you, you, you do the plan, um, and I think George Collins did all the engineering down there, he would probably have a lot of that information. Um, you can put on a plan, we have a plan, it's part of the record, you got permission and, and um, you're okay. I would be looking for a motion if someone wants to make a motion or if you want me to make one. I would be, I'm inclined to uh, look for a positive determination on the uh, RDA, which means that you would be required to file a notice of intent if you want to pursue the trees. Okay. okay. That would be my motion if somebody wants to move it. Or, or second. Uh, our motion as stated. Uh, okay. And I second. So, so second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Basically, what we just did is a positive determination means that you can't do that. The only thing you can really do now is come up with an engineered plan. Um, it's an arborist that handles trees, not a botanist. So it would be very helpful to get an arborist report um, and clearly delineate which trees are going to come down because I think with this particular case, someone's going to do a site visit. Okay. Okay. Um, you can get a plan in. I don't think you really have to go real crazy, just something in the backyard. Um, and get us something back and then hopefully you can get some of this stuff down yeah. in, in three or four months. Okay. Okay? All right. You'll be getting a notice. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Hi, you too. Me too. Okay. I'm terrible with this, so uh, right. somebody, somebody ought to put Okay, so this, this is, back. yes, so this now, is. Now, is this it here? This is, yes, so I'll put it back in here. I'll put this in here. No, we gotta check the mic box here. Oh, yeah, sorry, because this is... This is going to be a positive. Uh, I don't think we did this one yet, which was the negative RTA, right? Is this, mm -hmm. Yeah, this was the one oak tree. So that's still here on the desk. Does we have a thing to sign? Is it? Oh, I don't know. I thought... We, sh we should have yet. Maybe it's the second page. I'm gonna sign for this one. All right, I don't see where. Okay, I'm gonna check the box here. It's gonna be a positive determination. Okay. This was the negative. And what I did here on this on an IDA, yeah, so you got that one we just discussed. Yeah, it. yeah Sean. So Murphy. Say, yeah. yeah. Um, what what I did is is under the determination, uh, it's going to be a positive determination, which just means that that uh, the area is subject to the act and it requires the filing of a notice. Okay. Yeah. So, that sounds good. This is the one for 39 Ocean Ave. We've never signed that one. That was for the large tree oh, that they would take. No, we didn't sign, so right, no. I didn't find it right away. Okay, can we need the rest of this because you need to put on the negative. What I did in this year, yeah. That's for 39. Okay. Um, I check the box, which is a positive determination. Yeah. 
and that it requires the following of a notice of intent. Perfect. Okay. So that Thank one you. was out of order, I think, for 39. Um, out of for 39 Ocean Ave. I don't know if the page is where it belongs for checking yeah. the box. You want me to find okay. And that one is the okay. negative. This is the request. This is the request. Um, I don't know if she got to the. This, she, this was on the outside of the um, folder. That's where I found it. Okay, we need the rest of the form. It should be as, as many. should be form two. So let's sign that. I'm just going to make, it's going to be negative. Mm -hmm. Determination. And I'll reach out to Peggy in the morning. Okay. I don't want to mix this up. This is 39. So, so this just has to go down to Ed, Ed? to sign that one. Mm -hmm. Everyone has their choice. I got a 735. I don't know why they're not here. I don't know. Just look at the house. Um, why don't I do the 725 first? Oh, do we have a 725? Okay. Yeah, I'm going to. Um, this is a stormwater management, so we, this is just going to be up, up for discussion. Um, just to bring everybody up to date. Um, on the stormwater management hearings, they have in the past been handled like a notice of intent, meaning the applicant brings in the file, pays the fees. At some point, it goes out for review, but the hearing is scheduled right away. That's not the process for stormwater management. The process for stormwater management is that they submit their application, submit their fees, because out to be reviewed, all there's four different boards and committees being the health department, planning department, building inspector, and I missed somebody, highway surveyor. They have 14 days to review that plan. Then their comments come back to this board for me with the developer. And if we've worked out all the details, because we get the peer review that we're going to have to deal with, any comments from highway, any comments from Board of Health. We discuss that with the applicant. Once that's all discussed, then we hold a public hearing. That's the way it's outlined in stormwater management. Um, that's what I explained to them last week, and they clearly understand that's the way this is going to happen. Um, so on 266, and I get these a little mixed up, 266. And 265, that's the one. Yes. Yeah. I had to break it down with a little project, big project. Okay. 266 is the old peach fund. That's the little project. Um, that plan came in. It was reviewed by Pat Brennan. It had some pretty extensive comments that was addressed in part by Thorndike but not in its entirety. That review came in, you guys must have got it in today's emails. It was in today's emails. I didn't review the whole thing. Um, so once we get, this has, has been sent out to all the boards and committees. Once we get all the reviews back, we'll sit down with them, with Thorndike. And at that point, if the board's got any questions in this, I don't know if everybody's familiar with looking at plans, but this is, is a little problematic, the way the plan is. Right? Just so that you know, there's a, um, there's a gigantic concrete wall that ranges from five to six feet high at the street edge, and then the buildings are on top of that. 
Um, those are one of my concerns. Uh, there were some drainage concerns um, for basins, uh, and it's more more scientific. The depth of the basin can only be a certain distance of water table. They didn't meet that. They did change that. They did not provide any renderings at this point for us to look at some aesthetic pictures because I think this is a three-story building. So we're looking at six feet above grade and then, I don't know how many, is it another 30 feet above that? No, eight, three, 24, 25 feet. Mm -hmm. um, that's really not under our purview. We just gotta make sure the parking and all that stuff. It works. Um, and one other issue, and I did send a message to the fire chief this morning, I don't believe that there's enough um, turning radius for fire apparatus for the front of the building. And I'll address that with the fire chief along with the, uh, the planning board chair um, to see if the fire chief's going to allow it. Um, I believe there's a 20 foot setback from this wall to the building. And if you need to get a fire apparatus in the front of the building, how do you accomplish that? Um, and then this, we haven't got a septic design, and there's some issues as far as the, the, the ground infiltration. The systems they got out there are going to be catch basins going into ground infiltration um, systems, and then a, a, an exterior catch basin. So, but it's out to be reviewed. Once we get the comments, we'll put it back on the agenda. Uh, I don't know if it's going to make the 625 agenda because there's a lot going on on that one. Um, but that's just kind of an update. There are plans in the office, but there's like 15 pages, and it's overwhelming. So anybody can be more than happy to go and take a peek. So, okay. Okay, I think that... So that's pretty much a work in progress. We're waiting for a review, for them to come back with a peer review, them adjusting to the peer review. Yeah. So the, it's, it's still in that process and yeah, working the, things out. The second peer review is back. That was in my email tonight, but I, I didn't have time to, to re review the whole thing. Okay. Uh, so the second portion of this is Peggy did send out two on the, on the boards for their comments. Okay. They have a, uh, 14, 14, days. 14 days to do that. And then we'll set up another meeting, which probably will be in early July, mm -hmm. uh, and address all of that. Um, and then we'll hold a public hearing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I have an administrative question. Can I can I ask um, about the structure of our um, agenda? Does it need to be five minutes, five minutes, five minutes for bigger, no. okay. bigger discussions, no. uh, bigger well, projects? Well, let's go back there. Great point. Okay. Because at the um, hearings and appointments, um, Ping and I discussed this. I just want to get the general consensus of the board is that we have a lot of hearings and they have to be scheduled time certain. Mm -hmm. um, I have worked in towns where all the meetings are scheduled for 7 p.m. They're advertised for 7 p.m. So everybody's here at 7, mm -hmm. you work your way through the list. Okay. That seems to cut down on looking at the clock, okay, it's 7.15, yeah. I can't take it before. Oh, so if okay. the board's okay with that, um, Peggy is gonna try to work on that. I'm fine with that, because especially like certain, like tonight we had certain things that took a couple minutes, yeah. a continuation, so you can, you don't yeah. have to wait that three, four, five minutes. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. I like it. So she'll, she'll stop that. Um, and we are looking for the May 14th. I don't know why the folks at... Should we continue that 7.35? Because they're not here. Oh, this is, well, can we discuss it? Because didn't you go out there? This is the one where they wanted to remove all the trees. Um, so it is after 7.35. Are we able to discuss it without them being here? We, we can. Um, I went out there too, but go ahead. I'll, Do you um, want to open it? or? Uh, yeah, I'm going to open the, the hearing on... Um, so a quick question on the 725-266. Uh, Do we have to continue that or just move on? No, we just got to move on okay. because that's stormwater. That's, that's going to take longer time than we. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's okay. stormwater management. That's fine. Okay, so we're going to open up the RDA for uh, 36th Avenue 
Uh, although the, the owners aren't here, I'm surprised. Um, we'll just open it up for, from this, for discussions. Yeah, I'd like to know how it went when you went out there and you took a look. Yeah, it was um, definitely, it was a little area they wanted to remove and they were, again, like the, you saw the pictures, mm -hmm. they were very, you know, small trees and then the ones that looked more established. Um, I was unsure what they wanted to do, if they wanted to take them all down or if they wanted to keep some and they didn't really have a clear answer. Okay. So I would think that if we wanted them to keep some, maybe have them somehow tag the ones that they want to keep. Yeah, that's what we discussed last meeting. Yeah, yeah. we did discuss As that. You? And they weren't. When I went out there, they weren't. Yeah. It was like, yeah. I, I did meet with them. Um, only because I, I sent uh, Melanie uh, an email and I didn't hear back and I wasn't sure. So I did go on the way in. I, I went in and I met with I'm terrible with names. I the don't, owner. I don't okay. And um, he showed me the area out back, which you must have saw. It's got stones coming up that he wants to put loam on top. Yes, um, okay. in the back behind the house. Right. And the then way. he showed me the hole in the front which needs to be yeah. filled. And he showed me the trees, and he what they what he told me they wanted to do, and I saw that the septic had been repaired, and I kind of guessed off of the pond that this tree clearing that he wants to do is is, is somewhere in between the fifty and the hundred, a uh, little bit of it's out of the hundred. It appeared to be twenty five, thirty maples. Biggest one being eight inch, they probably average three inch. And if you looked at the property, they were all leaning to daylight, which meant they'd just been searching for that open area. And I asked him, what did you want to do? And he said what they'd like to do is to remove all of the trees and put up a privacy fence. The thing that I looked at, the, the, the adjacent property is probably maybe 10 feet from the lawn. I asked him where it was a fence post. Those trees and the vegetation has impacted the roof of that house, um, gutters and so forth. Um, they were, they were maples. Um, not that, I mean, maples take up a lot of water. Uh, it just looked to me, aesthetically, and the fact that none of the trees, if the trees were fairly healthy and growing up straight, uh, I'd probably look at it a little different. But, I mean, they were all heading this way. Um, and I wanted him to explain that tonight. I don't have a problem if they cleared it, if he's gonna put up some sort of a privacy fence. Um, they're in between the 50 and 100. They're in an area that the septic system has already been repaired. You can see the septic tank is over here, the trees are here, and I think the impact, the leaves, the gutters, and all that stuff, that would kind of bother me. How about if they did do that and put up the privacy fence? Maybe put some kind of vegetation like blueberry bushes. I think they mentioned that last the meeting. They were going to do something. Yeah, something like that, just to get some roots in the ground. Yeah, I definitely so have that involved in if we do. Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to tell you though, if well, there's one thing that we'll have to consider. The only way you're going to get blueberry bushes is to cut all those stumps out of there. So do you, do you no, want to no. take the stumps out? No, I no, would not. and and the, I no. saw probably a 36 inch dead pine there. Um, I don't know what would go in there. Are they going to need to take the stumps out to put the fence up? No. Yeah, just go over. Uh, no, the fence, the, he showed me with an old fence post, so the, um, if you looked at it, we got the tree line that starts here and goes towards the house over there. There's a large tree right there, so it wouldn't be where the fence would go. Um, and you wouldn't take that stump out. It'd just be too expensive. Um, but where there's so many in there, they'd have to excavate to try to put some bushes in. So, and I asked him, and he said he's gonna put a privacy fence. Whether that's a stockade fence, or bushes, I don't know. Um, so he does want to remove even the established adult trees, not just, yeah. because they talked about maybe leaving the established adult trees six inches <clears throat> diameter or greater 
and instead just removing the younger, the saplings. That's what we talked about during the last meeting. Correct. And that's why they were going to mark them. But um, they really want to remove the adult ones as well. Yeah, only because if you look at the lean, they, they, I mean, if you, if you look at the yard, they just, uh, and, and, and unfortunately that's what trees do, pines do that too sometimes. Um, once you open up that area, and it's been open up for so many years, then these trees, I'm going to say they're probably in three inch calipers, maybe 10, 12 years old, um, and they just, they reach. I call it reaching. Day, Even right? the fully established adult trees. Yeah, they're all. Yeah. They're all. Okay. You know, I think if it was a nice, straight, healthy tree that grew up, um, you know, you're going to get some impact from, from you know, under the neighbors, um, on his roof, and all that other stuff. But healthy, yes, but crooked. Okay. Well, I think so. They're doing. They wanted to do this as a. Um, an RDA, not a notice of intent, right? So if we did issue a negative determination, we could do it with conditions, though, that they plant elsewhere on the property. Um, yeah, I would think if that's what we issue, yeah. We could. Yeah. In theory. So because it is within the 100, most of it within the 100, some of it within the 50, that, that planting, you know, one-to-one -one ratio or... Uh, replication not necessarily replication square footage wise but you know replacing what they are planting elsewhere they want that spot clear they don't want those little trees but what about bushes just something to to still absorb the water because it's going to impact well, the you know, ability to what, what we can do is if you felt as though that um, you want a bluebird bushes or something like that Within that, you could issue that negative determination with replacement of the, in this particular case, I don't like to be specific, but maybe we should be in this particular case, is determine what do you want there for trees, and if they're not happy with that decision, then they'll have to file a notice of intent. Okay. The thing, or, the, what happens is, um, you saw the driveway is, is like this way up here, then they have to go down three steps to their yard. And then it's kind of it goes up to the house. So there's no surface water in and it goes to the pond. I'm just not sure where they Where they put, would plant? Yeah. Where they put, is that area it would be is, out of a hundred and it, is that area where the trees are is probably the only Yeah. Because you have the yard yeah, on the well, other like, side. You know, maybe let them just try to figure out if you have, if you want to put if you know if um if you want to issue a, a, a negative and put in three shrubs or something, six shrubs, they'll have to figure out how to do that. Right. Well, I was thinking more when they come to us um, that they should have a plan of what, what You're they're going to, correct. how they're going to, because, you know, that really is what applicants should be doing. Right. They're supposed yeah. to come to us and show us how they're not impacting the hydrology. Okay. and. In my experience being on this board, they have most of them haven't really been doing that. They've been coming to us and sort of looking to us to tell them, right. but they're supposed to be saying, this is how we're not impacting the hydrology. This is how we're offsetting before they come to us. So I feel like that's really up to them and then it's up to us to approve it rather than us tell them because we can't do that without a site visit really. Correct. And I mean, I personally don't have the time to do a lot of site visits. Mm -hmm. um, so. I feel like they should, they should be proactive with that coming to us in the first place, and I'd like to somehow get that word out to, to applicants. Um, Can we this, is, this, this is an educational process with wetland. Most people, the first thing they're scared of is the septic system, and the second thing is the is the wetlands people. Yeah, <laughs> they're both very expensive and a lot of rules and regulations. And then I, I, I probably I would suggest that we continue it, and I'll send them an email that um, the board is, would consider removal of those trees, they just need to come up with some sort of a replanting plan. Right. Yeah, I'm fine. That sounds okay. great. Yeah. All right, okay. so we're going to continue 36 Avenue, and I'll write that note to the homeowners. The name is Nelson's. Can I make a motion to continue? I'll second that. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Four zero. 
I've got administrative notes and I'm going to go along. Oh, pieces of paper. Okay, rotating peer engineers, three forty policies and procedures. Um, May 14th meeting minutes. We didn't have a quorum of, of the folks attending that May 14th meeting. Are those minutes here? Because I think yeah. we, we do have a quorum now. If you weren't here May 14th, they are wrong because it says present at the meeting, you are here. <laughs> so, in fact, it says we were all here, and I don't know if that's true or not. Okay, I better look at those. I, I think that was the meeting that I sat in the audience. Maybe. Oh, maybe. It was your first yeah. meeting because yeah. you did kind of yeah. join, so yeah. they might not okay. be wrong. Yeah. Oh wait, no, it says that this was the meeting where we did the reorganization of the board. Okay. So oh, maybe I got my dates wrong. <laughs> okay. We were here. Yes. Yeah. Which meetings did we have last week that we continued? Yeah. Was that May 28th? The meeting after that, I wasn't here. Okay. Well, was... let's take a look at them. <laughs> yeah, we have there for the minutes for... <clears throat> it's paying to say. It's the sun time is kicking in. this fast to be able to really know if this is correct or not, but so far it looks about right. <laughs> so, well, I'm okay with it. Okay. We technically have three meetings to uh, approve minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me uh, see if the other ones are here. Who was last? There's only one we have on our list here, one. I only okay. see that one. I think that's the only one on the. There's no other ones listed here. There's no other ones listed, okay. I could have the dates mixed up. Did I show you guys this? Before we adjourn, can we talk about the policies and procedures for Absol one more minute? Absolutely. I don't want to talk while Kat is reading. Oh, sorry. No, that's okay. okay. So we have to do that. I had another small one that we've used. Stormwater management reviews? Um, okay. Occasionally I do, yeah, it depends on the time frame I have to review them. Yeah, okay. These are very limited. Mm -hmm. While we're doing this, I'd like to have you guys take a peek at that. Please. Street. 
today? I'm sorry, what's the question? Did everybody get the, an email? I think I did, I didn't look at it. Oh, okay. I have been Is that the straight out? That's okay, the, yeah, that's just the one on um, Brandeis and that went out to council. I did respond to it. Uh, it's that the one near the real address? I believe so. Yeah. I've never been on the site, but that's the Brandeis Circle area. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. There was a very, very lengthy email in the... Um, yeah, planning board was involved in that. Uh, highway was involved in it. Too. Yeah. But we were not involved. And we discussed it at, at that meeting. And um, I, I did send an email out. I don't know if I got it. I may not have. I have a 266-month concert. <laughs> And that's all I got today. It was today it came? No, it maybe it was yesterday. Oh. Basically, it was just the litany of um, some of the issues, but that's gone off to town council, so my response was that it's really a conservation issue. So there's nothing that we could do. What was the address again? Uh, one... 285, you said? 125, oh, or 60 Brandeis Circle. Yeah, I don't believe I have an email about that. I have um, 129 Oak. 129 Oak. That's okay. it. I don't okay. believe I have it. I read that one, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, it was written, it was going to think of Plate and Swear from Paradise Circle. Just going to go over one one more item and then I'll turn it over to Melanie. Um, it's not in the folder. We did receive a, a, a written complaint from the owner of 597 Montponser Street regarding 596 Montponser Street, which is that new building, new house that's going up where the old theater was. Oh, wait a minute, you guys aren't. Okay. You the remember, old theater? You, you remember the old theater, right? Oh, they're gonna put a house there. They don't prove. I know. I remember they tore it down. Pop. Yeah, That's they, the one they tore down. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah there, there was a complaint. The guy across the street complained. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The fence. It has a big white fence now. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, that, I, I, that the yeah, one with the fence. I did a site visit there a few months ago. Oh, yeah, you did. Yeah, I've been there like a lot, a year or two prior to that. So. Okay. Yeah. I, There's complaints. We got the complaint, From, and I, I I did a, a site visit. You know, I unnoticed. Un, 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 I just went there. Okay. Um, everything was fine as far as the erosion control. Um, the issue was more about him cutting trees or something, and then Mr. Koalas across the street cutting trees. Um, so I, my response was that siltation, everything was fine, and uh, we had no issues. That was it. Mm -hmm. Did they have permission to cut the trees? It was within the... the there, was, there was no tree cutting. Uh, oh, the, the complaint it wasn't tree cutting. No, there was, uh, I think the complaint basically said that you, you've allowed the gentleman across the street at 597 to do all this, so I'm not going to file any permits if I need to do it. Isn't that a big difference as far as distance from the water, I would assume, that one falls in conservation yeah. and one does not? Um, they, they both fall into conservation because the, was it one feet? has the lake. Oh, I see. And the other one has wetlands. Oh, I see. To the right of it, I think. Yeah, left. To the left. Yeah, to the, yeah, to the left. Um, yeah. So it, it really had no relevance on this. They just felt as though we'd double check, make sure all erosion control, because they just started building the house. It's been a long time, but yeah. so everything seems to be fine. So I just wanted to address that. Yeah. Okay. And having said that, maybe you wanted to discuss something. Yeah, I just wanted to share that um, I did look at this, and I am okay with several of these. Um, there's just a couple that I'm not, so I, I wrote no next to the ones that I personally feel they should come in front of us for. So I didn't know if... Now might be a good time if we have time to, to pass it down and take a look at it, but uh, or if there's a photocopy machine or if um, you know I, I want to share that with Kathy, but I, I just wanted to write down like you know can which you, ones. Can you do this? Would you like me to read it? Can you make your adjustments? Uh -huh. Send it into Peggy. Okay. And let her share it with us because okay. Kathy has not had the ability to read that. Okay. And she, All right. So I'll send should. it to. 
Yeah. To, to, um, to Peggy, Peggy, and she can share it with her. Yeah, just make sure you put the that she's going. Sounds good. All right. Is there any other anything else that we missed? Um, I don't believe. Do, do we have any bills? No, that's unusual. Um, it's not on here, but I didn't see any over there. Um, with no, that's that's fine. Now this agenda. Do I have a thing right. This agenda we had to um, post it early, so the original agenda didn't have. Uh, a lot of stuff on it. There was an issue with the town clerk, so we had to post it. I think the sixth, and then she reposted it again this morning when I made when I asked her to make sure that we added on 341 Plymouth policies and procedures. Mm -hmm. But you know, all the postings were well within the open meeting law, so I'm not really concerned about that. Okay. Um, we didn't take any votes, anyways, on any of this stuff that we added. Is there anything else? I'm curious why it says executive session. Is that just on here as a template, or do we, are we supposed to have an executive session? It must be template. Okay. Yeah, I think Peggy added that yeah, a I few mean, months ago. You, you can add it, but typically we, we would have to. If you want to keep it on there, that's fine. I'm one for keeping stuff on the agenda until it's done, just so that it doesn't get lost in the shuffle. Why they have it on there, I don't know. Okay. Just make I don't sure know if there's any one. need to go into executive sessions. Um, anything else? What I would like to do is have members consider this. Mm -hmm. This is something we've used in the past. It's 12 by 18. It's only one mechanism. And I think for our bigger projects that are coming in, when you've got hundreds of feet, a 50 foot yep. that we might want to strongly consider requiring this at least doing all of the construction I think even beyond that to mark the 50 foot you know so that so we've talked about possibly doing <coughs> a fence or some sort of um, indicator of where the 50 foot is and I think that might be a great idea. I, I'm not a big fan of putting fence. fence. Yeah, we, yeah, we just But something it. like a sign, a post. Yeah, we just have to probably just, yeah, the sign will be fine. We have to probably discuss yeah. how many um, feet in between posts. Yeah. yeah. I have. I think it's great to maybe even beyond, I, I feel like we should do it beyond construction. Well, well I think we have. Oh, yeah. yes. We've um, just been part of our conditions that they have um, the post with the sign on it. I think the sign that we've done in the past hasn't been as large as this one. Mm -hmm. This is definitely more noticeable. Um, and as far as, like I said, as far as how far in between the posts, we've changed that, I think, yeah. several times over the... Yeah. It used to be like every 16 feet so that then we they wanted, made it longer, if they wanted to make it a fence, they could easily do that. But then like, we've also done it before where it's every 50. Yeah, 50 um, or 60, I think, yeah. yeah. This would not be for that. I know what you're talking about because I have a bunch of sites. They're on a four, four, four by four post. Yeah. Typically, they're going to be a, um, not a pressure treated post. They're um, I can't think of the, the type of wood, mm -hmm. and the post goes right on top. Yeah. And it's a sign. It's about four by four. I should have had a picture of it with this. It said like do not touch. And yeah. it says this is conservation area. Yes. And I don't have my oh, other okay. phone. So just yeah. conservation area. Is that what it says? Just conservation no, area. No, it's it's I a little more yeah, detailed. Yeah. There's no construction beyond this point. But it's a very small piece that someone it can stay there if if it's a an area that's got a septic system, but we delineate the fifty foot, but they're allowed to mow, you can mow right around it. Um, because I've had situations where we've been, you know, mock the 50, but the activity has been within the 50 to the, from the, from 50 to zero. So, and usually it's lawn area to begin with. So that you have to put the posts in, and then they're still allowed to have a lawn. Because hmm. I, I thought, we, yeah, I think it, now years ago, like you get no, approval I'm, I'm to not, come. Not in this town. Okay, not in this no, town. No, no, I, I've had situations of, one was in Hanover, where I had a small river, and it was everything was disturbed, 
beyond that. It was all grass. But because it was from the 50 to zero, we still had conservation posts at the 50. But then 10 feet beyond that conservation post was lawn. So we just replaced that existing lawn. So it kind of looked funny because you had a post, but you could weed whack around the post. But that was permanently, people know that look at, you can't do anything beyond there other than cut the grass. Mm. That's it. Yeah. And, yeah. And most we of, did it here probably like, I know somebody, but they can cut it like once a year or something. Yeah, I was going to say, shouldn't they not even be cutting the grass? No, within no, no the, this, a fair point. What I'm talking about, this is, no this is within, a mis- yeah. this is in 30 feet from the backyard. And then there's a neighbor behind them. Oh. So what happened is there's a there's a, an intermittent stream that happened to run in between the, the properties. Oh, okay. So you only had so much room to put a septic system in. Yeah, so I actually see. the septic system was out front, but we had tanks that had to go all back. And so we delineated the 50 foot. Mm-hmm. Yet 15 feet or so beyond that was lawn. Uh-huh. So you really couldn't take that away. Yeah. Um, okay. And then it went into you know vegetation, and then went into the intermittent stream. But I think in most of our cases, from my limited experience in town, you're going to put these posts and there's no activity beyond the post. That you know, unless you get nice something, again. yeah. Unless you get something on Ocean Avenue where you, there's no other room. Right. But so we can consider this. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think with the two larger projects, where you've got a multitude of different contractors, nobody knows where the line is. If bring that up for the project. Oh, absolutely. Well, I think while well, it's going on. Yeah. yeah, put that up. I don't feel it's like inspected. we need to consider that. I think that that's a no-brainer, personally. Yeah. Can we vote on that? Because yeah. it's uh, No, we don't need to need to vote. We can include this in the order of conditions. Oh, um, that, would I don't, also, that would also go on with the erosion controls, because they should have those erosion correct. controls up also. Correct, and that would be inspected. Uh, yeah. I had to do a couple of inspections this week, and it's really not on the agenda, but I'm just going to bring it up. And, and, and I met Kathy in the office, and I'm, st- I'm still confused about when the project's starting. I found two different orders of conditions for Halifax, and only one of them had the language that they call the office prior, call for facilitation inspection um, before work is started. I wonder if one of them is an older one, and we just never took it. Yeah, because we always did an inspection know. with the self fence before. Yeah. Oh, I mean, that's standard yes. operating yeah, procedure no matter where you go. But yeah, I yeah. couldn't find it in the order of conditions, because when I went out uh, to look at the siltation line, I said to the contractor, did you read the order of conditions? He said, yeah. And he showed it to me. It wasn't there. Yeah, the one that didn't have it. Yeah. Um, so we can kind of look at that. Okay. So. Um, I don't have any update. I did spoke with uh, the town administrator a few weeks ago on the um, uh, agent. They're working with Bridgewater. Um, hopefully we'll know something in another month if they, they agree. But we're probably a couple of three months away from an agent. Okay. So, so is there anything else that we need to talk about? Not being 8.34. 8.34. Being 8.34, I'd be looking for a motion to adjourn. I put a motion to adjourn. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Thank you.